what do you think is the purpose of reality? Why does reality exist? Jesus. Um, (laughs) Why does reality exist? I don't, I mean, I think, first of all, I think we see, I'm not sure that I know how to answer that question exactly. Um, I think uh, we see reality is so subjective. We see such a narrow piece of what is happening. So, you know, our reality is a tiny little slice of what's actually happening. Um, I mean, I think the human, like, I know one of the topics that you love to get into in the name of your uh, podcast, you know, simulation, Um, both Ray uh, Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis believe that we are living in a simulation. Uh, I'm not sure that I necessarily am there yet, but I also find uh, the human body to just be just mind blowing. Like, how is it possible? Um, and you know, the world that we've been able to create the things we've been able, uh, to figure out, but, but really just like the human body to me, how, how we operate and the complexity, uh, it's just so extraordinary. Um, and so anyway, that's a, that's a bit of a tangent, but, uh, I find that just really miraculous and you know, I, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear how you answer that question. No one's ever uh, asked me that before. And I think I haven't <laughs> clearly formulated a great answer other than I believe we see such a narrow piece of it. What it serves that, us. That's actually a key. Yeah. That was actually a massive key because it triggered something interesting, which was that the same way that we only see the the 700 to 400 nanometer ish on the electromagnetic spectrum in terms of visual uh, is fascinating because that similar analogy can be drawn to our universe out of the multiverses. Right. That was an interesting right. one that sparked from, right. from that. The parallel, parallel realities that are all taking place, you know, at the same time and what's going on with quantum and the entanglement. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that is, like pretty mind expanding, uh, you know, yeah, as yeah. you try to put your, uh, your arms around it. May I, may I also, um, please, uh, <clears throat> the nomenclature of simulation is a, is something that makes, uh, there's like so many different, I guess, ways to interpret the hermeneutics of what simulation means to use a spiritual word to describe what a modern inter to describe an interpretation of a modern idea. But the thing is, is that what would, if we reverse engineer a Godhead, right? In this case, the Godhead, we have to make a hypothesis about the Godhead as what, like what the point of reality is. Right. And then the hypothesis might be something like I've been using three words to try and describe it, which is consciousness exploring infinity Hmm. so that there is an infinite amount of states of phenomenology and qualia and experience that exist and that consciousness is just eternally undergoing the explorative process and it's doing it cyclically, which is why like Sir Roger Penrose who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2020, believes in cyclic cosmology. Not in the sense that we come back to this exact same reality. That's boring. We're never coming back to this exact same reality. But that we've been exploring reality designs and different vehicles to put ourselves into. This is four limbs, two eyes, carbon-based DNA encoded. But you have Mm. to be like Walt Disney and imagine all these other different soul vehicles and realities that exist. And then what you can do is you can begin thinking like, okay, well... Maybe it makes sense when I hear the words, you know, singularity is near. When I hear what, uh, when I experience VR, AR, mixed realities, when I see the bio and neurotech additions that are being made to, to, to people, when I see artificial general intelligence being developed, like maybe it is that the synthesis of those things is called the metaverse and that just like we are going to slowly be in, in, immersing ourselves more and more in indistinguishable virtual worlds 
that maybe this already is one of those, that we came from that and we're going back into it and it's cyclical in the sense that the Godhead is the metaverse and that we're going to immerse ourselves in more of these infinite explorations of realities. And it's our consciousness hypothesis. and our energy will be, you know, transition and be rebirthed. And yeah, that that makes sense to me, actually. Um, you know, I don't know that I necessarily believe uh, in God. Um, like, is this a part of a master uh, orchestration or is this, um, uh, you know, uh, by all compounds, chemicals, nutrients coming together and, and evolution going on this fantastical, uh, journey. I do believe though that I do believe in consciousness and that, uh, the consciousness continues on, which then causes you to think about, okay, what is that, this idea of a metaverse and what do you do? You, transition into something else or um you know what is that that kind of after this piece is gone you know what is the what is the next iteration i don't you know it's still evolving in my head uh, what that is but but the scenario you paint um makes sense to me and, and kind of resonates and then another question to ask then would be something like will you be a both a designer and a player in those games that we're talking about the continued exploration mm, mm. and is the answer I, I, hard to know but i would hope so you would hope so, so yeah i would then, love i would hope so and so then my my next sort of point then would be that if all eight billion people are undergoing both being the designers and the players in those games then we are the designers and players of of this right one. and so then For when sure. when people say the word god we are that we mm. are this this is all that. Right, right. And that's what the perennial spiritual traditions have been saying. Mm. The mystic traditions over 5,000 years from ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia all the way up until and in this valley with the Vedic Rishis, all of them have been saying, and through Zoroaster and the Axial Age and the explosion of all of the ones that exist today, that that common perennial spirituality is that my awareness, my consciousness my beingness, my isness, my existence is God and that it's eternal, it's infinite, it's cyclic, it's exploring hmm. and that that is it. And that now we take science and we simulation theory and we just leverage sort of the technological protocols that enable us to go into the next immersion. Hmm. That's a hypothesis. So how do you think technology then does does technology have a role in that technology isn't really needed right i guess for you to tra for you to transcend and for this evolution to to continue for you to go into kind of your next uh existence technology i guess changes the game changes the experience at least in in this uh universe well how would the, the question would be how would uh humans on the planet uh if meditating on mountaintops and not building artificial general intelligence, how would they undergo the metaverse recursion would be a question to ask. Well, is it not just a natural Is it a process? natural big bang and big crunch that's, that's um, and if it is- Part of the death, rebirth If it cycle. is, yes. And it, it, it may be both in a sense that it's- uh, so Are you saying actually that it's technology that enables you to do that? It's the evolution of technology that ultimately will allow us to Oh, interesting. Okay, I, I took it to be that it was just consciousness, you know, the energy it's, of our existence. And that's why I was going to say it's both in that sense, because the energy of the existence is what enables the process as we build the right. technological infrastructure right. that then enables us to go through the whole cycle into a different explorative interesting. place. So maybe back to this existence or a rebirth here, but more likely you think a rebirth someplace else? Something along the lines of like, we're so like, imagine like that whole electromagnetic spectrum visual is right. that you brought up earlier. I think that's, that's so spot on regarding our imagination and creativity being just, just quelled to such a small, tiny degree. Mm. There's so much potential that exists for universes uh, and conscious agents in those universes because I mean, just go look at the catalog of video games that exists right now. There's so many different creative universe designs that people are making. But one of the things that seems to be 
a property that we talked to David Johnson DJ about on the show, who's a simulation designer in virtual worlds just yesterday on the show, that one of the things that seems to be most common is this three space using X, Y, and Z in this three space format because it sort of comes from some sort of an origin zero point and then has these three axes, yeah. axes yeah. which then enable the sort of space phenomenon to, come to, alive to and, occur. Yeah, interesting. And so that might be a right. more common property of the universes that we design. Mm. And then time seems to be one that is... Uh, you know, this is one thing that many people can't handle is simultaneity. You can both simultaneously see the good in the U.S. and in China. You can simultaneously see the good in indigeneity and modernity in the left and the right and conservatives and liberals in the U.S. And in this case, it would be, can you literally hold the fact that you are both eternal, infinite, biologically, at the same time as you can hold finite biological time? where you literally have a North Star and that right. you're in like fun pursued and like... I think the answer to that so, is yes. yes. I'm not there yet, but I definitely know some people who really are there and believe that, you know, in their core. And it's amazing to see. And they work very hard in this life and this existence to optimize it and be the best that they can do, but also have kind of a, a much longer game and broader perspective, uh, which is really beautiful and freeing and energizing in, in many ways. Yes, 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 I love that. And <laughs> I, hope, I hope that one of the things that can come from our dance is that if I can come and help some of what both the founders of the Kitty Hawk companies are doing and some of the A360 community as well. If I can come and help be of service to what topics we've been talking about to help people become more ethical, moral, spiritual, philosophical, artistic as they do their science, their engineering, um, and their actualization of their business entrepreneurial goals into the world, that that is like definitely one of my main like loves and passions and roles. And I would I, love to feature more of them. On I the love show. that. I very much appreciate that. Would love to love to figure out how we can integrate that more into, into what we're doing. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I love it. What a, what an epic program. 